everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Vân Vu from Vietnam and I'm trying to be a professional Vietnamese by sharing useful content about Vietnamese food, culture and travel tips. So if you have followed me for a while, you know that I love sharing positive things about my country, Vietnam. However, I don't want to just sugarcoat my country because that's not how it works. No country is perfect and Vietnam is still a developing country which has a lot of ongoing problems. So today, I decided to make this video to address some of the issues that foreigners complain the most about Vietnam and I will also explain the cultural reasons behind those behaviors so hopefully I can manage your expectation before you move to Vietnam and just later realize that Vietnam was not for you. But always before I start, if you want to see my daily life, don't forget to check out my Instagram if you want to support this channel, don't forget to check out my merch. I'm gonna leave the link in the description box. All right, with that all said, let's get started. The number one problem that a lot of foreigners complain about Vietnam is the noise. According to the study of the Institute of Occupational Health and Environment, noise levels on 12 major streets in Hanoi are way beyond the safe level. It's understandable that noise pollution came from rapid urbanization, small personal space, and unclear laws, but did you happen to know that Vietnamese people are naturally loud? Geographically, Vietnam is an agriculture country where people traditionally work in fields, so that's why they have to make themselves heard to chat with others out in the open. With high job demand, a lot of people from rural areas migrate to the cities and bring their habits of speaking loudly. Secondly, Vietnamese people believe in an to nói lớn, meaning a person needs to speak loudly to show his confidence and power. Last but not least, Vietnamese people love càng đông càng vui, the more, the merrier. That's why people love to gather up, sing karaoke all night long, and say một hai ba zo. It means one, two, three cheers when they drink. So Vietnamese social life may be good for your soul but not for your ears. My friend Dustin, he loves Vietnam to death, but he couldn't get used to one Vietnamese habit, which is cutting in line. You know, if I go to the airport, somebody will be cutting in line. I go to the cinema, somebody will be cutting in line. Not all Vietnamese people have this bad habit, but I know there are a lot of people still do it here in Vietnam. And this behavior just turns people off, including Vietnamese ourselves, and a lot of foreigners who come to Vietnam. When you get in line here in Vietnam, people tend to stay super close to you because we have small personal space and the light might look like this or like this. Huh? But why do people cut in line? Well, let's go back to the 1900s when Vietnam had to deal with multiple wars such as Chinese War, French War, American War, etc. During that time, people had to live on top of each other in camps, bunkers where there's no sense of personal space. The concept of waiting in line simply didn't exist because people couldn't wait to feed their starving selves or bringing food home to their family. Additionally, the concept of communist and socialist government, which everything needs to be shared, create a FOMO effect, fear of missing out. With limited resources, everything needs to be shared to everyone. So if you come first, you might get better service or you might get food, but if you come after, you might go home empty-handed. Gradually, this behavior becomes a norm and it has passed on from generation to generation. Nowadays, thanks to the globalization, a lot of people realize that cutting in line is unacceptable in many cultures, so not many people do it anymore. However, you can still see it here and there while shopping at local markets where the population is older. So if it happens to you, if someone cuts you in line, you can just say, xin lỗi, it means, excuse me, the line is down there. Nice. Vietnamese traffic is something that people either love or hate. A lot of foreigners, when they first came to Vietnam, they were very shocked seeing people driving in the opposite directions, running the red line, honking and shouting at each other. It's absolutely chaotic. But for expats 
who live here in Vietnam for a long time, they said that they love the traffic here. It's unspoken rules and when you uh, get a grip of it, you know where to go. And they just love the freedom of hopping on a motorbike and go wherever they want. Due to unorganized traffic, honking is super important and it serves as a necessary warning sound. And I already explained it in this video right here, so you can check it out. Also, let me know in the comment down below if you would love or you would be absolutely afraid of Vietnamese traffic. Like other developing countries and tourist destinations, trash is a huge problem in Vietnam. A lot of foreigners complain that they see trash on the sidewalks, restaurants, at the beach, and even worse, they see people burning trash. The reason why people burn trash is simply because they have nowhere to throw away their waste. In Vietnam, if you need to dispose of your waste, you need to go to waste trucks, which call xe zap, and sometimes the trash collector will ring the bell to signal everyone to bring their trash out. Unfortunately, not many people sort trash here in Vietnam, and if they do, there are people called junk buyers who collect and sort out the metals, cardboards, plastic bottles, and they sell it back to the factories. The system is way too complicated, plus there are not enough facilities and people who can take care of 64,000 tons of waste per day. Lack of environmental education, people are not aware of how toxic it is when they burn trash, and the laws are not um, strictly enforced, so that's why burning trash is still an ongoing problem here in Vietnam. I know there are a lot of foreigners who come and help to make Vietnam clean, uh, like my friend James Candle, and his action really motivates Vietnamese people, especially young people, to change their mindsets and behaviors toward environment. Some foreigners who don't want to come to Vietnam because of its cleanliness, and I totally get it. In all, trash is still an ongoing problem in Vietnam, and we are working on it right now. I remember one of my friends from Europe commented that Vietnam is such a foggy country. Unfortunately, it's not fog, it's pollution. With the rapid growth of urbanization, Vietnam is suffering from some of the worst time of pollution on record. The main causes of air pollution come from transportation, construction sites, factories, and burning trash. Today in Hanoi, the air quality is pretty unhealthy right now. I mean, the government has a ban on vehicle in 2025 to reduce the emission, but it's still a proposal. I hope it can be implemented as soon as possible, and I believe it will. The last reason why you should not move to Vietnam is to expect Vietnam is like your country or other countries that you have traveled to. No country is perfect, and so is Vietnam. I moved back to Vietnam because I see its potential and I wanted to contribute to make it a better place. There are thousands of reasons to fall in love with Vietnam, and if you don't believe me, check out why you should go to Vietnam video right here. If those five reasons above are deal breakers for you, I totally understand it. But if you want to challenge yourself and see what's really happening in the world right now, come to Vietnam and you'll never regret it. Hope you have an amazing day or amazing night. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel because it really makes my day. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Bye. But he couldn't get used to one Vietnamese habit. Nowadays, thanks to the growth of globalization, globalization. <laughs>